citronella and cedar. I feel like those are the ones that really keep the flies off. But this mix is working. I'm just waiting to see how long it takes for the flies to come back and they're staying off of her. Not perfectly, but way better. Does she look full enough to you? Do I need to put her out in this pasture? Uh, I think she's fine. There's plenty to eat out here. But what about how she looks? I think she looks good. Let me get her off of here. I can't tell the way she's staying. Okay. I think Arthur said yesterday she was doing two months, but she's actually doing one month, July 9th. So we need to make sure we have all of her birthing stuff on hand and certain medicines. Jerseys are prone to milk fever and even can be prone to ketosis and probably some other things, but those are the two I know about. And this, you know, the milk fever can happen right after calving. So I just gotta make sure and get everything we need. So we need CMPK, uh, like a liquid CMPK to give intravenously because that's what works the best whenever a cow is down with milk fever. We'll probably also get the CMPK paste and give it to her if we catch her in labor or the day before we think she's going into labor. We don't have chains to pull calves so if something went wrong we would have to call a friend to come pull the calf for us or the vet and that makes me a little nervous. Maybe we should just get some chains watch a few videos. I'm gonna look into that. I think I would feel better. We'd still probably call friends though. <laughs> I've done it before. We're gonna let the cow out into this section because her rumen looks a little empty. There's plenty of grass up here, but... She is stubborn about eating food. I'd say picky. It needs to go up in there so it doesn't all ground out. I've asked friends who have a lot of cows a couple times, hey, like if you're having trouble with a birth or trouble with a calf, call me. But I, my thought is, I just think that's the last thing on their mind. Plus, they're addressing it right away. Oh, like call you so you can come learn? Yeah, yeah. because I'd like to, I'd like, I know people who are doing this stuff every calving season, not a little bit, a lot. I could probably be more persistent too. I can't wait to see that baby. Her udder is starting to feel a little bit. Yeah. Because her udder is usually super like accordion folded. Yeah. And I mean, she has a really big udder and it's kind of low, so it's, gonna take a while for it to really look full but I can tell the difference. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. She's eating this section. This is the first section I grazed and mowed about two two and a half weeks ago, three weeks ago. And that's what she, this path is on. I'm moving my lane. So the lane was there. You can see or I can see a little path. Then the lane was here. There's a path. I'm just trying to spread out the lane impact mm -hmm. as well. I really love jerseys because they're beautiful and they give good milk and cream. But I my dream cow would be a mixed breed. Um, real high quality, good genetics, hardy Jersey with um, milking Devon. So I already have a name picked out for when I get my dream cow. And, or maybe even I would do a Dexter, but I wouldn't consider her uh, a hardy Jersey. She's not that hardy. Even if she has a heifer calf, we probably will not keep her, or we, we may grow her out for meat, but we probably won't keep her. We'll sell her to someone to use as their family milk cow, because I'm I'm hoping, my plan is to hold on to her until I get the cow that I really have been wanting for years. <laughs> but I love her, I take good care of her. She's just a little too prissy. I think she's a great grass-fed cow. The people we got her from never gave her anything other than alfalfa and grass, and yeah. she did great for them. Yeah, but she's just picky, and like Milking Devon and Dexter will eat all, everything. That is true, if you compare the bull to her, eating side by side, you know, if when you throw them out, kind of coarse, dry hay, the bull would just dig into it and and she would pick through it. It's, it's a dramatic difference. He would eat it, 
just like a bulldozer. It's like almost straw, just swallowing mouthfuls of it. It's actually one benefit of him coming back soon is that he'll eat a bunch of this stuff that she's just leaving, so much of it. Though I don't know how long we'll keep him once he rebreeds her. What have you been working on? Just weeding. I was, I was hoping to get to the point to plant my sunflowers, but I didn't quite get there. How are you feeling? Hot. I'm gonna go swimming. It's really hot. Yeah. I've been mowing in preparation for mulching these apple trees out here and decided to just go ahead and knock out the rest of the lawn so it took a couple hours. I spared you all of that. I feel like there was a time in our early videos before we had farm animals or anything and we were trying to make six videos a week and it feels like it took about two half days to mow the lawn and I feel like about half of our early summer videos were mowing if you remember. Some of y'all been around that long. We got another mulch pile! <laughs> right in front of my barn door. That's alright. Those chips are gonna fly, honey. I know. Our kids are still staying with my family. They'll be back in just a little bit. This was kind of our day off. We pretty much worked the whole time. But it's, it's fun to work, honestly. Working without the kids around is kind of like, it's kind of like the difference between walking through like a thick forest with brush and then just walking through the forest after the goats have been in it. Uh -huh. What is that called, like silver pasture or whatever? Yeah, it's kind of like, I was just thinking about this morning. And it's, I want to be careful here because it's not that we don't love our kids or even miss them, I can miss them. Miss oh, their little yeah. voices. Absolutely. I love having them around. I wouldn't trade them for all of this, but there's just so much that I do in a day that when you take the kids out, it's like I'm just have nothing to do almost. I know. It feels like just like this kind of like relaxing hobby. <laughs> Even though I've been mowing and working all along because normally I'd be doing that stuff, not getting as much done, and I'd be like changing diapers, cooking meal, answering questions, doing things fun with them. Yeah, all you do between. a lot of fun things with them. Did you turn the air conditioning on? Yes. Oh, he likes getting to the river and being sweating. I don't. All right, we're here. We'll see you guys in a little bit. We're gonna jump in the water. Wow, that's changed so much for that last flight. Wow. Look what I got in the river. It's a bundle of little driftwood to go in the garden. It's just like a beautiful thing. How did it get a well, I bundled it up. That's how it got in the bundle. I'll show you where I'm going to put it. It's just a little ornamental thing for Mama's garden. Guys, thanks for joining us. It's been another great day on the homestead. We really had a great fun day. So did the kids. So did the kids. And we got quite a bit done and we also relaxed some. Yeah, I think the relaxing part was really fun. I never wanted to leave that river. Guys, thanks for joining us. We will see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.